Testament. More Old Testament. All right, Valerie, question. Is it true that the flood didn't really cover the entire earth? If so, what's that theory based on? Um, yeah, there's discussion in among faithful, godly, spirit-filled, Bible-believing Christians that take scripture as the word of God that was the flood global or was it widespread? Um, if so, what's the theory based on? It's based on things like in Genesis when it says, all the earth came to Joseph to buy grain because the famine was severe in all the earth. Very clear statement in the book of Genesis. Um, we also know that all the earth did not come to Joseph to buy grain. People from all over the earth, and by that meaning all of the land around Egypt, as far as the author's world stretched, they came. But it's a figure of speech. We know that not even all the people in that region came to Joseph to buy grain. Jacob didn't come. Jacob sent his sons to go buy grain. The family didn't come. Only the sons came. And then not even all the sons. Remember, they had to go back and they had to get Benjamin and bring it. So, so it's based on that. People saying, okay, one, what, are the, what, it, what would be required for Mount Everest is 29,000 feet above sea level. So for Mount Everest to be covered to a depth of 20 cubits or however many cubits, that means that there would have to be water that encircled the globe six miles. And there's just no geographical scientific evidence that anything like that ever happened. There are people who say that there is evidence that a widespread flood happened throughout the ancient world. And part of that is because every ancient culture has an account of a great flood, like a cataclysmic flood. Gilgamesh epic, the Atrahasis epic, Enuma Elish, all of these ancient documents speak about a flood. So at some point in primeval history, there was a massive, you could say worldwide, from the sense of all the peoples of the ancient world. But did that mean that Mount Everest was covered? Uh, did the flood stretch to South America? Um, not only is there no scientific evidence, but the purpose of the flood in Genesis, and this is what proponents argue, I'm not going to take a side, but the arguments that they make are the purpose of the flood was to destroy sinful humanity. So as far as humanity has spread would be as far as the flood needed to spread. Other things they point at is after the flood, in less than a year, in, in a in a couple of, I don't know, weeks, day, I'd have to go back and look at the chronology, but but in a very short amount of time, when the ark came to rest in the mountains of Ararat and Noah sent out the birds, a bird came back and it had a, a leaf in its mouth. Well, that means that there would have to have been trees growing and they would have to have grown enough to have branches that would have leaves that a bird could then go find purchase in and then eventually not come back. That would take longer than a couple of weeks or, or however long. If six miles of salt water, fresh water, all kinds of water mixed together had covered the entire earth, um, it just doesn't seem like it would have gone away that quickly. So people make that argument. You can weigh them on your own. To me, the all the earth came to Joseph to buy grain is the most compelling argument to make that Genesis is Genesis speaks in hyperbolic language. All does not always mean all. It's just like we would say, um, man, my back is always hurting. Like, well, not every second of every day, my back may not be hurting, but if it frequently hurts, I could say all you would know what I mean. I know what I mean. I'm not trying to make a precise scientific statement. Um, anytime you see words like that in the Bible, all, every, whole, you always have to take into account, we may not need to press this entirely, literally, and all the earth coming to Joseph to buy grain because the famine was severe in all the earth. It's not like you had Inuit Eskimos paddling down to buy grain because there was a famine in Greenland, for instance. Uh, so yeah, that's where it comes from. That's the arguments they make. Check out the commentaries, check out how different interpreters of Genesis read it, but don't just think that there's only one way that the text can be read uh, because there are multiple.